Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to answer a bunch of questions sent in by Mario. And Mario knew that I did keto for a while, and he had a bunch of questions about how keto kind of worked for me, how keto kind of fits into a poker lifestyle. So I thought this would be a great time to kind of just do a rapid fire Q&A. Mario asked a bunch of really good questions. So we're just going to talk about them, talk about answers, and have a little bit of fun talking about how keto and poker can work together. So if you don't really know what keto is or you've heard of it and you're not really 100% sure what's going on, keto is a diet that is very high fat, very low carb, and moderate protein. And essentially the idea, and mind you I am not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but from the research that I did, we essentially have two different fuel sources that our body can run off of. Our body can run off of a carb fuel source or a fat fuel source. And most of us run on a carb fuel source. Essentially we store carbs, we eat a lot of carbs, we store them in our body, and then our body can use them for energy as it sees fit. Or by doing something like keto, you can actually switch it and say, you know what body, instead of using your carb fuel source, which can be a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish, you have to stockpile a lot of it. Instead of doing that, let's actually switch it over and use fats as our major fuel source. Fats being a little bit more efficient and you don't need as much storage when it comes to things like carbs. Again, I'm not a scientist. This is just what I've learned from the research that I've done and I think it simplifies it easily enough. So I wanted to try and say, okay, what would happen if I switched my body's main fuel source over to fats instead of carbs because the average American diet is very, very carb heavy. So this is what I experimented with and I should say this as a disclaimer, I am not saying that this is advice for you. This is my journey with keto. This is my experience with keto. Before you do any sort of diet or any sort of major change to your body, go talk to your doctor. Just standard legal disclaimer here. I'm not taking any responsibility. This is just simply my experience with keto. Now we should be totally honest here and say that I really enjoy experimenting on my body. I like experimenting with things like diet and food and sleep and exercise and trying to figure out what is optimal or best for my personal body. I think bodies are very unique. I think certain bodies like certain things and also don't perform as best with other things in their system. So for me, it's all about experimenting and trying to figure out what is best for me. So again, this is about me, and my body, my journey, not necessarily advice for you by any stretch of the imagination. But when it comes to experimentation, I think it's very important to have some goals. So when I originally set out to do keto or even try it for even a small period, I said, okay, let's build out some goals and make sure we understand what we're doing here, what we're aiming for, and see if keto is actually going to help us accomplish that. So the goals that I had when I started keto were the following. First was to test my discipline, especially because things like food can be such a quote unquote default thing, right? I think a lot of people don't even really think about the food they're putting in their body, be it how much or what kind. So I really wanted to test my discipline and resolve when it came to diet and really start to look at diet because diet is one of the toughest habits to change. So I think it's very, very important to test your discipline and make sure that you're increasing it as much as possible. Second goal was to improve my mental efficiency. I'm all about trying to make sure that I'm as mentally clear as possible, that when I am able to work, that it's as productive as possible, that I'm my best personally when I'm around my family. These are important things to me. Number three is I wanted to lose some weight. I was about 180 pounds when I started started keto in the first place. And I also, as a fourth goal, wanted to release some lower stomach pain that's kind of been bothering me for years. So I want to see if by switching over to keto, I could kind of get rid of that, either eliminate it entirely or at least minimize it and go from there. And I've also had some skin conditions really since I was in like high school. So uh, quite some time. And I wanted to see if I could cure those as well and see if maybe my diet, especially the carb density of things was factoring in negatively. So so those are my four major goals when I started keto. And if you're going to do any sort of experiment, always make sure you understand what your goals are, write them down, and then look at them from time to time during your experiment to make sure you're on the right track. All right, so the first question from Mario is, how was the transition into keto? If you've done any research on keto whatsoever, you may have heard of something called the keto flu, which are essentially flu-like symptoms when you first start up keto. Now, I've done keto twice. I've done keto for a nine-month stretch, and I've done it for a six-week stretch, and both times, yeah, I had the keto flu. It was pretty darn brutal. About 24, 48 hours of high nausea, puking, and watching my body kind of trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And just as a personal note, and I'm not sure if it's like this for you as well, but whenever I try to make like a major change in my life, and again, I like experimenting
experimenting with things, especially things like diet, supplement things. Like I've taken months off of caffeine. I do things with my sleep. I'll talk about that in another video. But whenever I try to do something like this, especially a major change at a sleep or a food or a drink level, I tend to notice a lot of resistance from my body. And I thought the keto flu was exactly that. My body really tested me saying, okay, are you sure you want to do this? Because we're going to kind of fight you on this for at least a little bit of time before we say, okay, we trust you and go back to it. So I looked at kind of keto flu as my body saying, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm sure I'll work through this. Again, it was pretty brutal for about a day or two and high nausea. Essentially, I had to drink a ton and ton of water, had to get a lot of lemon in there as well to try to get my electrolytes up. I could not manage it on either time. So again, a lot of puking, but it just is what it is. Again, it was 24, 48 hours. Then it was totally out of my system. And then I was kind of more figuring out what the stasis for my body was going to be. But my body tends to fight me pretty aggressively when I make initial changes like that just is what it is. So like I said, I have done keto twice, once for the longer nine month stretch and once for about six weeks. And the six week one was really just to double check my dietary discipline. I think it's really, really easy for us to not pay a lot of attention to our diet and watch it kind of get out of control, start getting away from us. And just in general, I think it's important to set goals, apply levels of discipline to yourself, improve to yourself that you have the discipline to withstand even very difficult things like dietary change. That's a really important thing to me whenever I'm setting goals. And in general, if you haven't really tested your discipline in a while, this is a really, really nice way to do it. And discipline's incredibly important in poker. The discipline to make solid decisions at the table, to quit when you need to quit, to continue pushing through study sessions when you need to, to continue putting in long grind hours if it's the appropriate situation and environment for it. I think it's important to test your discipline, prove to yourself that you have it. There's a lot of psychological benefit to setting goals and hitting goals or or if you're not really able to hit them yet, then continue working toward that. So if you haven't really done this yet, I would definitely suggest doing it pretty much sooner than later, if I'm being totally honest. Now, I should say that when I transitioned into keto both times, I did carb binge super, super hard the night before, and then I cold turkeyed it from there. For me personally, I found that cold turkey really, really works a lot better. Just rip the Band-Aid off and get to work. For whatever reason, that's just the way things work for me, especially when I'm trying to implement changes at a really, really deep level like diet. So that's just kind of what I did. And honestly, that could have easily contributed to the keto flu both times. But I found that works better for me instead of trying to implement something slowly in a ramp where maybe... Maybe I'm getting kind of semi-sick for a while. I just find it better to get in there, go super, super hard at it, get sick for a couple of days, and then I'm back in it rather than trying to drag this out over a long period of time. Again, totally, totally a personal decision. That's just the way I find things work for me, but I did that both times. And another thing that really helps during the transition period, and, and mind you, the transition period isn't just those couple of days when you have keto flu. If you do end up going this direction and you do end up experiencing such a thing, the transition can actually take multiple, multiple weeks until you get into a state of ketosis, which again is this kind of like higher efficiency level where you're running off of a fat fuel source instead of a carb fuel source. The biggest thing I found that helps a ton is water. So before I started keto, I was doing about 80 ounces of water per day. As soon as I started started keto, honestly, I was up to probably something closer to like 150 per day. And I kind of stayed at that level for a really, really good chunk, a little bit higher during the summer, especially when I was in Vegas. But shy of that, everything was very, very high in the water source. You need that to kind of keep the headaches at bay. You need that to make sure you're flushing your system out. And that helped a tremendous amount. The other thing that kind of helped a lot is making sure that I was studying both before I started keto to make sure that I was understanding what keto was, was it possibly going to be best for me to be totally fair. I wasn't convinced that keto was the optimal diet for everyone, and I wasn't even sure if it was going to be best for me, but I couldn't know for sure until I actually tried it, implemented it for a while, and said, hey, this is how it's working for me, good, bad, or ugly. I had to at least try it if I felt there was any value. So I did feel there was value in trying keto, and I was definitely willing to go through things like keto flu in order to try it. But just kind of be aware of that, that that helped a tremendous amount both beforehand, understanding what I was going to experience, and also during, especially in the earlier stages when I was starting to transition into keto, keep my mind focused on something, especially during the keto flu days, and really make sure that I was doing things properly. There was a lot of refinement in the first month, and that's just kind of whenever you do anything that's really, really big implementation in your life, just kind of be aware of that. So you kind of have to have a love for that kind of study and exploration. Again, wasn't convinced it was going to be the optimal diet all the way around, but I wanted to try it. I wanted to see how it worked, and I was willing to make some sacrifices, especially for 
mental and physical efficiency that was really, really important to me. All right, so Mario's second question is essentially how long did it take you to feel like you were in keto or had keto down? So both times it took me a couple of weeks to really start finding my rhythm, though to be totally honest, I did find positive effects within the first few days. Again, kind of once I got past that keto flu. And just in general, going from a traditional American diet to a keto diet was definitely abrupt, right? The traditional American diet is very high carb, very high calorie, and honestly fairly void of actual nutritional value. So I needed to fight past that and getting into a keto diet, which again is gonna be low carb, which means I'm not using any bread with my, you know, if I'm going to have a sandwich, no bread's going on that thing. I'm going to be very, very aware of how many carbs are in condiments that I'm using, like sauces, like using barbecue sauce just was not really an option anymore. So little things like that will definitely change. And it took some time and experimentation to figure out what was working and not working. And honestly, when I was going through this keto phase, I definitely had to add some supplements to my system. I had to add MTC oil. I had to add fish oil, magnesium, zinc, and some others as well, and that helped a tremendous amount. Just for the record, I know that you might go to a store like GNC or whatever, and you're seeing like a thing of like keto stack and other like ketones and, and all this kind of stuff. I never found that that stuff worked. I did a decent amount of research to figure out why I don't think that works. And essentially it's just throwing a bunch of empty chains into your system and telling your system to code that however it sees fit. And to have your body code those empty chains again through like that keto powder or stuff, to have that get coded properly as ketones and not as something else, I didn't really see enough support to say, okay, that's something that I'm going to do. So I was really focused on the dietary part and then the supplements if need be, but not supplements in terms of like, you know, keto powder or anything like that. If I was going to throw something in my system, like an MTC oil, I needed to understand what the carb value of that was. I needed to understand the other value and how it fit into everything as a whole. So again, it did definitely take a few weeks before I could even suggest that I was in ketosis because that's really the goal, ketosis. It's this state of really, really high efficiency running off the fats, there's really no carb system left, and everything is running on that highly efficient fat fuel source. So it took me a long while before I could even say that I was in that, but that's just kind of part of the journey. And then another thing I'll say here is that I did log everything for the first two or three weeks, every single bite. I knew the macro content, and the macro content, just for the record, if you hear me use that or you've heard that before, is essentially looking at your big three, your fats, your proteins, and your carb, essentially what the density of all of those things are in your diet and the food you eat in your diet as a whole. So I logged everything. I knew every single bite that went through my system. I knew every drink, every supplement, every vitamin, every micro, every macro, everything got logged and tracked. And then I also during that phase would say, okay, say for breakfast, I'm going to eat two eggs, whatever. I would say, okay, what would I normally eat on my old traditional American diet? And then I would compare the two. So that way I would have a deep understanding of what I was doing in terms of my keto change and then what was also happening in my old kind of traditional American diet. And again, kind of what I eat now. I'm not on keto at the moment, not by any stretch of the imagination. I might get back there at some point, but for the moment, I am kind of back to more traditional with a little bit more balance, but definitely not keto by any stretch of the imagination. But this process is extremely important. And then another strong motivator, honestly, within the first week, I lost about 10 pounds when I started switching over to keto. And this was pretty much both times, to be totally honest. I lost a good chunk of weight in that first week. And then in the first month, especially when I did the longer hold, I lost about 25 pounds within that first month. So that was pretty darn motivating. Again, one of my goals was to lose a little bit of weight. So definitely did that within the first week and also first month. And that was important for me. But logging all my stuff, keeping track of all my stuff really helped me understand when I was likely going to be in ketosis, when I was nowhere close to it, and when I needed to make some actual changes, either by adding some things or deleting some things or maybe even adding a supplement here and there to make sure that uh, my body is running as efficiently as humanly possible. All right, so Mario's next question is, how hard did I find it to maintain ketosis once I got there? And to be honest, this was kind of the easiest part for me. Once I got into that state, I saw the positive results, I was enjoying how I was feeling, and I 
wanted to continue seeing what the bounds of this were, I found it pretty darn easy to stay there. Now, just in general, some kind of like big picture numbers to understand what happened here. I went from kind of, again, a traditional American diet and my personal diet was about 3000 calories per day and very, very quickly, like honestly, almost overnight when I switched over to keto, I was down to about 1.2K calories per day on average. And I know that's very, very low, but by the same token, I didn't feel starving really at any given point. Yes, I would feel hungry when it was mealtime, but I definitely didn't feel starving by any stretch of the imagination. And I should also mention that a lot of people when they do keto will stack intermittent fasting on it. So maybe they have a feeding window where they only eat during say a few hours per day, or maybe they cut a meal, or maybe they just do 24 hour long fasts and then you know eat for whatever period of time, whatever. There's a bunch of different ways to do intermittent fasting. And I didn't honestly go into this intentionally saying I'm going to intermittent fast. It was honestly just something that naturally happened as a byproduct of this. It was not uncommon for me to wake up at like three in the morning and then not eat breakfast until like noon. So, and just for the record, during those first nine hours of working, I was highly, highly efficient. So it worked for me. It wasn't intentional, the fasting part, but it definitely was something that I found very, very easy to do. And it just simply was what it was. So again, that made it very, very easy to maintain ketosis. And just if I'm being totally honest, I definitely struggle with depressive bouts. I know most people do, so it's not super, super uncommon. I was hoping by switching over to keto that that would get lessened, but honestly, it wasn't affected one way or the other. I didn't notice more depression or less depression. I was hoping it was going to be less, but it wasn't. So that was kind of something that that happened throughout. And when I would go through a depressive bout, it would definitely make me want to cheat. There would all of a sudden be all these signals and flares that would go off in my brain that says, hey, we we really need to, you know, cheat here. We need to have a Burger King day. We need to, we need to cheat. And those were kind of the, the tougher days. But honestly, overall on normal days, no, it was really no problem at all to maintain this mode. So again, there's a big difference between cheating, right? And just like dumping a whole heap of carbs into your system. And by the way, whenever you kind of throw in too many carbs when you're in ketosis, it takes you a while to get back to normalcy and get back to ketosis. So there is definitely a a punishment if you do decide to break and add too many carbs into your system. And honestly, I would notice that if I went just a little bit too high on a day, it might take a little bit for me to get back, maybe 48 hours. But if I like super, super carb cheated, yeah, it would sometimes take me three, four, five days in order to get back. And I I think there's enough evidence in my research to support that that's what was actually happening. It wasn't just a mental thing. But carb cycling is essentially when you, again, are running very, very low on carbs and your body says, hey, I need some carbs. I need my reserve to get recapped. And at that point, I would usually play into that. That happened about once, maybe twice a month on average if memory serves. And I would always try to make a better carb decision than a bad one. I wasn't just going to enter like empty carbs into my system. I wasn't just going to have pasta one night or just go like dump off on Burger King fries. It was more maybe I might have rice with a meal or I might have a really, really high veggie meal, like say add kale into it. That would help. So there were times when my body was like, Hey, I really need some carbs. And I would usually listen to it, assuming that my body wasn't trying to cheat again when the depressive flares went off. Yeah. My body was definitely trying to pull me towards cheating, but I could tell when my body was just like, Hey, I need some carbs. And just for the record, I found that when I was in this process, listening to my body paid huge, huge dividends. My body knows when I need to add something or delete something, when it needs a little bit of extra carbs, when it definitely doesn't need extra carbs. The toughest part when you are like high, high discipline is saying, okay, when do I need to override this urge for my body versus when do I need to listen to it? I actually found during this process, it was pretty natural, pretty easy because my body was like pretty darn loud when it needed carbs at all. And I would carb cycle if need be. But otherwise, very, very low carb throughout the entire thing. Again, I think on average, my daily goal was like 20 net carbs. And that tended to work pretty darn well for me. But it wasn't uncommon for a lot of days to be like 15, 16, 17 net carbs. That just kind of worked and just was what it was. And I should also mention two things that kind of made keto a bit more challenging for me personally. First and foremost, I eat biblically, which means I do not eat unclean. So I don't eat shrimp. I don't eat 
eat crab, I don't eat lobster, I don't eat pork, which means no bacon. And honestly, bacon is a major, major staple for people that do do keto. You get a really, really good fat ratio on that, but that was not an option for me. So I had to find other kind of sources in order to kind of balance out the fat and protein part of things and make sure I wasn't getting overly carby. And then the second thing is that I don't like coffee, like at all. And I tried coffee a bunch of different ways during this because I still wanted to get caffeine through my system, but it was struggles, honestly. I tried doing things like Bulletproof. I tried running a lot of butter through my coffee, a lot of fat creamer through my coffee. I tried things like Four Sigmatic. I tried adding MTC. I tried a whole bunch of things. I tried different flavors. I tried really expensive ones, really cheap ones. Just could not for the life of me figure out what worked for me with coffee. I just really could not get that flavor to work for me. I did drink it occasionally when my wife made it. My wife did keto with me for a little bit during both of those stints, which helped a tremendous amount. But honestly, I noticed for caffeine, I kind of had to use Mio for those kind of things, which is just a water additive that has some caffeine in it that helped a tremendous amount, gave me a little bit of flavor, forced me to still drink a tremendous amount of water. And it also gave me some of the caffeine that I still needed at that time in order to hit what I was trying to accomplish. So that worked for me, honestly, for caffeine on a day-to-day, -day, like normally, like now, it's energy drinks, and I had to cut that out entirely because those are just far, far, far too carby for keto. It just was what it was, but it was pretty easy. Mia worked decently enough, but uh, trust me, if I liked coffee, it would have been much, much easier, I feel. In fact, I still might be keto today if I enjoyed coffee because that was just a great way to get a lot of fats in, again, when you cut it with things like high-fat creamer and stuff, but uh, unfortunately, it just was not for me and it still isn't today unfortunately. And then the last thing I'll add here is that the kind of toughest thing during keto was to actually eat out. So eating at home is easy because you have full control over everything. But when you're eating out, you're kind of at the whim of whatever the restaurant is. And especially if you're trying to eat out socially, that can be very, very tricky. So B-dubs was a major, major staple in my diet, if I'm being totally honest. Blue cheese gave a really, really good fat to carb ratio. So blue cheese was excellent with everything. And then also spicy food for me is less bland. So that made me at least enjoy it a little bit more. I'll talk kind of about the palate side of things in a little bit because that was definitely something that eventually got me off of keto in the first place. So B-dubs was a huge, huge help. And honestly, things like blue cheese, things like MTC oil, things like avocado and guacamole helped a tremendous amount. And then also I used butter in everything that I cooked, either butter and or cream cheese. That went a long way towards making sure I was getting enough fat content in my system. Honestly, sometimes that was the the toughest part is I wasn't really hungry, but I needed to throw something that was high fat into my system to keep my macros in check. So those kind of things, again, avocados and guacamole went a very, very far away. Honestly, we would do a lot of like cream cheese mixed with tuna fish, throw that inside of an open avocado. That went a very far way in terms of keeping all of my macros in check and making sure that things were progressing along. All right, so Mario's next question is essentially, how do I feel a keto diet would fit into a normal poker player's lifestyle? Now, the biggest issue with keto is that every single meal requires time. You're not really gonna have fast food options when it comes to keto, at least I didn't find very many that were viable. And the other fact is that you're really not gonna be able to do like quick microwave things, right? If a quick microwave lunch or a quick burrito, any of that kind of stuff, too carby. So none of that stuff is really gonna work. Every meal you're gonna want to eat is pretty much going to take some amount of time investment. So keep that in mind. It forces you to be a proactive eater. And this is good whether or not you're on keto, to be totally honest. If you're a purely reactive eater, it's not going to be as good for you. You're going to make less good decisions. And I find that to be, you know, something that I don't want to be doing at all. The other thing is that meal prep becomes very, very important, especially if you're working for high efficiency. So every single Sunday, I would make egg bombs for the entire week. That would be for my wife and I. So we'd have those, heat them up very quickly in the morning, dip them in some guacamole, and we're good for at least breakfast. Again, that kind of thing kind of came in later, but it was very, very helpful. You have to be efficient. And again, every single meal takes time, either time that you spend on, you know, one day per week, make it all the meals or time you're going to spend during every single meal. It's far easier for me to do when I work from home. But if you work in an office, especially you have to be proactive with this. You cannot be reactive. Otherwise, you're going to end up doing a lot of intermittent fasting, whether you meant to or not. 
The only other thing I'm going to mention here is that poker players benefit the most from mental endurance and minimizing decision fatigue, and I found that keto helped with both of those. In terms of decision fatigue, honestly, there weren't a lot of decisions to make, especially when it came to mealtime. Either I prepped it out and it was already ready for me, or I knew, okay, here are like two or three different options you have for lunches. Which one do you want? It's not like on a normal diet when you have tons of different options available to you. I did not have a tremendous amount available when I was in keto. So it made my life much, much easier in terms of what do I want to eat for a meal? Yeah, it was pretty darn easy. As for the mental endurance, that's extremely important for poker players, especially those of you that put in longer sessions. And I found this to be very, very good on keto. Honestly, I found myself able to focus longer and also more clearly when I was on keto, which is extremely important. So for that fact alone, I found it to be super, super helpful. And this was true both when I was playing poker or I was working in general. It's trust me, it just, it went a long way for me personally, which is why I kept with it for so long that first time. I mean, getting into nine months of it, it gets a little monotonous after a while to say the least, but the only reason I kept through it is because again, my efficiency was so high, I was losing weight and I was happy with where I was, both in terms of my progress and the way that I felt mentally and physically. So poker players benefit from all of those things. And for me, I find that very, very important. Now, I'm sure at this point you kind of understand how important I find mental efficiency and making sure that we are as mentally strong as possible. This is extremely important in poker, both on and off the table. If you're interested in going deeper in this conversation, I would definitely suggest checking out The Mental Advantage. It's a course I did with Dr. Trisha Cardner, and we talk all about important things that poker players need, like solving tilt, which is great, but also things like increasing discipline and understanding focus and getting deeper into these things, both from the science point of view. And by the way, we recorded this before I even started keto. So a lot of the things we talked about here kind of factored right into starting keto in general for me. But this was a very, very good course for getting into the mental side of the game and taking this part of the game seriously. If you're interested in learning more about it, just visit splitsuit.com slash mental, check it out, see if it's a good fit for you. And I think you're really going to enjoy it, especially if you see the benefits of mental improvement, but you're not fully happy happy with where you currently are at the moment. All right, so Mario's next question is, how do you maintain keto in the poker room? So the biggest thing is to make sure that you bring your own snacks. Now, personally, I would use like a keto snack box service. So for like 40 bucks a month, they sent me snacks every single month, sent me a box full of a bunch of different options. And I found that to be particularly useful because they would essentially source options for me, minimize my own research time. Every single month I got some new stuff and I'd say, okay, these are things I like, so I'll buy a bunch of that in bulk, or these are things I didn't like and I I won't buy them anymore. And I found a bunch of things that worked, throw it in my poker bag, good to go, snack when I need to. And that was good both again when playing and also when just at home lounging around, needed a quick snack in between meals. That helped a tremendous amount. Let them source it for you. Definitely a good, good time saver. Totally worth the investment. The other thing is to make sure that you drink a tremendous amount of water. No energy drinks at the poker table. No, well, I guess you could do coffee, but I just find that if they're going to throw a creamer in it, it's probably going to be creamer that's far too carby, which is not worthwhile. So personally, I found that water helped a tremendous amount and just in general. And then if I needed caffeine, I would bring my own Mio. They're just these little squirters. You just dump them in the water, you shake it up, and you're good to go. So that helped a tremendous amount as well if I needed caffeine. Otherwise, just water, make sure I bring my own snacks and good to go. Again, you're going to have to kind of plan ahead if you're going to be playing in a live card room for like 10 hours and you need a meal. Well, you're not really going to have a tremendous amount of options at restaurants. If you are going to eat at restaurants, I would definitely suggest looking at the menu ahead of time, knowing what's going to work versus what's not. Do they have options that are viable for keto? If not, don't go to that restaurant. Don't put yourself in that position where there's nothing you can really eat or do there. Find things that work for you. Even out and about, you can find certain things like if you absolutely needed to, you could go to McDonald's and grab an Egg McMuffin, no ham. Well, no ham for me anyway, because I eat biblically, so no pork. So that's just egg and cheese. And you know, it gets me a little bit. It's not too carby and I'm good from there. Again, take the bun off and you're good to go. And you can find options like that if you absolutely, absolutely need to. But again, plan ahead, be a proactive eater, be a proactive planner, especially when you're just talking about snacks and then make sure you drink a tremendous amount of water. All right, Mario's next question is, how do I feel keto impacted my poker game specifically? Well, I already mentioned a couple different things, right? 
the higher efficiency and endurance in terms of mental and physical ability, which was really, really good. In terms of poker specifically, I felt like I was able to focus longer and more efficiently and more consistent over a longer period of time. And that's just simply because I wasn't carb spiking, right? I wasn't having a carby snack and all of a sudden just spike off afterwards or a carby meal even worse. And I wasn't having things like Red Bull where you get that massive uptick in energy and then crash down afterwards. I wasn't having any of that. Again, I could still have the caffeine and I wasn't enduring anywhere near the same sort of spike afterward, which helped a tremendous amount. So I could focus longer and also more consistently throughout that entire session, which was super, super helpful. And the other thing is that specifically I didn't feel hungry, right? So I didn't have hunger pains distracting me. I didn't feel like I needed to eat every two hours like I oftentimes feel on a more normal diet or even, you know, every three or four hours. If you're going to put in a longer session and you're feeling hungry multiple, multiple times during it, what are you going to do? Eat a quick snack, probably super carby, your carbs spike, and then again, you have efficiency issues and your focal issues and your focal consistency, and that's just not a good thing for longer sessions. And especially if you're one of those people that just can't play a ton, but when you do play, you tend to put in longer sessions. You need those sessions to be of super, super high quality. And I found that keto really, really helped for that. Again, for me specifically, but if you have any issues or you have any experiences with this yourself, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear how it's affected you, either as a long-term thing or even just in the short term, if you've experimented with both poker and keto overall. All right, so the next question is a big one and a very important one from Mario, and essentially, how did I find my overall health both before, during, and after my keto experiment? So essentially, before, I found my diet to be too carb-heavy and massively influenced by the traditional American diet, and in my opinion, that traditional American diet was pretty garbage, again, way too high in carbs, but also just nutritionally void, in my opinion. And there's just so much bad information out there about traditional diets, you know, just just do a basic search like, you know, are eggs good for you, right? An egg is like a totally common food and there's so much debate on whether they're good for you, bad for you, something in the middle. And yeah, there are like basic things that are important, like drink water. Yeah, that's good. Or don't only have candy for all of your meals per day. Sure. Yeah, that's good advice too. But a lot of the stuff in between, I didn't really find to be super, super high value, actually seemed to conflict a lot with more recent food science, especially when you look at something like the food pyramid in America. I'm not not sure if that exists outside of America, but you know, the food pyramid is just largely crap. So again, that was kind of my beforehand. My overall health was eh, not great. Again, skin conditions, some physical pain and more weight than I feel I really needed. During keto, I, again, once I got past that keto flu, things were pretty darn solid. My sleep wasn't really influenced. I was less sine wavy during the day. Again, it wasn't like massive amounts of just spikes and carb spikes and energy and then just massive drop-offs, anything like that. I didn't really experience a lot of that during. And I also noticed a lot of increase in terms of my mental energy levels, which was extremely important for me. Again, that was one of my major goals. I should also note that I did feel low or physical energy levels. I was reducing my gym visits from about three times per week to one at most. And actually by the time I was kind of done with my longer keto stint, I really wasn't going to the gym at all at that point. But that could be due to a ton of different factors. I could have been too low on my calories. I could have been wrong in other things. I could have just been that I was more enthused with work and family than I was with going to the gym at that point. So there's a bunch of different factors. I don't want to blame keto one way or the other there. But I did find the whole thing during keto to be quite fun. I found it fun to try new recipes. I found it fun to experiment with things and find substitutes for things that I like. Like, I enjoy soda, but, you know, when I was in keto, I would try something like Zevia. I enjoy caffeine, and instead of energy drinks, I would do something like Mio. So I, I found that kind of experimentation to be quite fun during and then after, I definitely went a little bit carb nuts. So my meal to solidify leaving keto was, what, a cupcake, hot fries, and a Dr. Pepper. So if that just kind of lets you know kind of how off the rails I went when I just originally got off of keto, it just simply was what it was. I like to have kind of a celebratory, you did it, you hit your goal, celebrate, and then let's get back on track afterwards. And that's exactly what I did when I quit keto. 
And then soon after quitting keto, I did definitely start putting on a lot of that weight that I lost. Just simply was what it was. But I did have a better awareness of carbs overall, my macros overall, and better intake overall after that. Again, not the cheat meal directly after keto, but just in general, I make better decisions post-keto. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all I can really ask for. And there's also an increased psychological benefit, again, from setting a goal, hitting a goal. Dietary goals are very, very difficult to hit. It. Dietary habits are extremely difficult to change. So I noticed a lot of upside from actually hitting those goals and that helped a tremendous amount on the after side of things. So again, I'm outside of keto at this point. I'm definitely not keto by any stretch of the imagination right now, but I do find I'm making better decisions than I was prior to doing keto overall. So I would say that the experiment overall was fairly successful, at least in that regard. And then the final question from Mario, and it's a big one, is why did I decide to quit? quit keto? Why did I stop it? So there's a bunch of different factors here, but the first one is that I wasn't convinced that keto was the best long-term diet for me. Again, I'm trying to figure out what is the best for me, both in the short term and the long term, and what is optimal for me and my body. And I wasn't convinced that keto was the best long-term decision. I'm not even sure if it's the best long-term decision for anybody. There's just not enough data yet in order to suggest that it is. I found it to be extremely good in the short term, but I just wasn't convinced that long-term it was going to be the absolute best thing for me. Which kind of relates to point number two is that I was losing a tremendous amount of weight and I wasn't stopping. So I am 5'11", and again, I started at about 180 when I started keto, and I quit keto at 142, and I was continuing to drop, and there was no sign in sight of being able to stabilize, and I really didn't want to be under 140 pounds at my height. I didn't feel like that was going to be best for me. I was looking very, very thin, so I kind of said, you know what, that's not really where I want to go in terms of my weight goals. I did want to lose some weight. I definitely didn't want to start getting into the 130s, 120s. I felt like that was a little bit too light for me and my body. So that was kind of something that I thought was important, but also I'm going to take some self-responsibility here, right? I could have done some extra work to try to stabilize. Clearly my caloric intake on a daily level being about 1.2K calories per day was very, very low, especially for a male of my size. So I could have done some extra work, should have been a little bit more diligent trying to work to stabilize that weight, even if it meant forcing more calories into my system, just making sure that the macro content was correct. But I really didn't, I didn't experiment enough with adding veggie carbs into the mix and trying to figure out how I could stabilize with that. So there was always further experimentation I could have done with this. But again, I was happy with the weight loss. But once I started getting too close to being under 140, again, I was creeping that direction. I was losing weight every single month very, very consistently. Yes, the first month was the largest because I kind of took off a lot of my stored carbs already. And then I was just working further and further down. I didn't want to be under 140. I felt that would have been far too late for me. And then one of the other reasons why I decided to quit keto was related to one of my original goals. Remember I mentioned that I had some lower stomach pain, that I had some skin issues, and keto just didn't fix those things. It didn't make them any worse, which is great, but it didn't help make them any better either, which was unfortunate. I was really hoping that that would have been the case. And honestly, had those things gone away, I may have put in more work in order to stabilize the diet to make sure I wasn't dropping weight so quickly, but it just really wasn't something that I was going to continue working to try to stabilize this thing if I wasn't also fixing those kind of pain and skin issues. And I still have those things. Now the skin issues, I've worked through some things, I'm at a better state with them, and the pain is kind of subdued, kind of still at the same level that it's been for years, which is great. I'm going to continue doing work to try to figure out how I can get rid of this thing. It just is what it is. But just in general, I, I know Mario and just in general, people kind of get curious about like doctors and stuff and, you know, what did doctors say about this diet? Did you talk to a doctor beforehand? Personally, I did not. I don't see a doctor on a regular basis. I only see doctors when I get sick, which is very, very rarely. Even during keto, I think I only got sick. Yes, I got keto flu, but that's not like true sickness. I maybe got sick once during keto. But on average, I get sick once, maybe twice per year, and it's not uncommon for me to go an entire year without getting sick in general. So my body is pretty, pretty well adapted. I don't need to go see doctors regularly. I monitor my weights and my blood pressure and all that kind of stuff myself. So these are things that I'm always kind of aware of. But if you don't track those things, it's even more important for you to make sure you're using medical care in order to track it and make sure you're on the right track with things. 
But just in general, I didn't bother myself with what a doctor thought of things. I kind of already knew what their thought process was in terms of traditional American diet values. And again, for me personally, I don't see the traditional American diet being anything other than really convenient. It's really not the best thing for really any system in my opinion. I think a lot of people could benefit from testing certain things, not necessarily to the extreme of keto, but definitely, you know, getting rid of some of the bad stuff in their diet, making some positive additions to the diet. I think that would go a long way for most people. But just in general for me, keto was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the experiment part. I enjoyed the research part, the learning part, the testing myself, the discipline part. And I definitely enjoyed the physical and mental endurance part. Again, it was nice to be able to not have food own me, not have my diet own me, rather I controlled and owned it, which was a really, really nice change of pace. And I enjoyed a lot of the side effects from it. And again, had the skin stuff and the pain stuff kind of subdued or gone away entirely, I'd probably honestly still be keto today, but I'm still working to figure out exactly what this is and I'll go forward from there. And once I figure it out, I'll be happy to let y'all know. So just for the record, if this stuff is interesting to you and you want to go further in your mental development, especially as it pertains to poker, I would definitely suggest checking out the pro membership over Red Chip Poker. Again, the mental course that I talked about earlier, I did with Dr. Trisha Cardner. She also does a lot of great videos over a Red Chip Poker that are included in the pro membership. The three that I would definitely suggest starting out with if you are a pro member or you're thinking about joining up would be the Nutrition 101 video, the Prime Yourself video, in the Dealing with a Distracted Mind video. Those are extremely, extremely helpful videos to get you started both on the dietary side of things and not that she's going to suggest going heavy keto, but rather that you're making strong dietary decisions on and off the felt and then also working on your mental game a bunch of different ways. These are just three of many of the videos she has in the pro library. Again, if you're interested in this, you can check it out. Go to splitsuit.com slash pro. It'll redirect you right over to Red Chip Poker. Sign up get started, enjoy the videos, and I really hope it helps you in your poker mindset as you are playing again on and off the felt. So Mario, thank you so much for taking the time to ask these questions. Hopefully this helps. Maybe just understand what keto is, how it might work for a poker player, and more specifically, how keto worked for me. So if you have any comments or questions, if you've done keto before and you're like, hey, split, this is kind of where you went wrong, leave a comment down below. If you have your own experiences with keto or other diets and how they have impacted your poker play, leave a comment down below. And if you wouldn't mind letting me know what you think about this format. I know it's a little bit longer. I know it's not a hardcore poker strategy, but any stretch of the imagination, but if you have any thoughts or opinions on it, I'd love to hear what you thought. Just leave a comment down below as well. And of course, if you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, hit the little bell notification so you get a heads up every time a new video is released, that would be excellent too. So as always, if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.